First Baptist Church in Fall River. Um, let's see, there is a Messiah sing this afternoon at uh, First Cotton. Um, how many people are interested in going? Anyone? No, well this is not going. Yes, Donna, okay. Um, I asked Andy um, if masks were required because I don't want to sing the Messiah in a mask and yet I know that our COVID numbers are off the charts. Um, I tested myself last, yesterday, I don't have COVID. <laughs> um, but um, Andy said they weren't required when he left to go on vacation just back from vacation and he doesn't know what the powers that be have changed things so I'm not certain um, if masks are going to be required I suggest that um, if you have a mask that you prefer that you just put it in your pocket if you are going um, but I'm looking forward to it as long as I don't have the mask <laughs> um, so three o'clock today um, Old Colony Baptist Association breakfast is coming up at nine o'clock on Saturday the 8th of January which isn't that far away, um, and I hope that some of you will consider going. It's at Messiah Baptist. It's one of our traditionally black Baptist churches in Brockton. Um, they have a heart for God, uh, and hopefully we'll get to go, well, those of us who go will connect not just with folks at Messiah Baptist, but also with folks from uh, other Baptist churches um, in this region. Um, the speaker is uh, Jeff Hicks. Um, who uh, will not only be speaking, I can promise you, because he's a pianist and a singer. Melissa, you would love him if you don't know him. Um, so if you're free at all, I know you work, uh, but if you're free at all at nine, no, not on Saturday. If you're free at all at nine o'clock on Saturday the 8th, this is something to put time aside for um, and sign up to go. Are there any other announcements? No? Um, let's see. My only other announcement is I'm going to send this around because people don't sign. I do always have um, a sign up sheets at the back for prayer, to offer the gathering prayer, um, and to read scripture. Um, this is a sign up sheet for um, the upcoming Bible study. I know I scribbled some of your names down on a piece of paper last Sunday after church. Um, even if you think I have your name already scribbled, answer this, please. I'm going to pass it around. Um, there's a place for your name, and then there's a place to check off whether you would come if we held it on Tuesdays at 2 o'clock, or whether you would come if we held it on, on Thursdays at 545. If you can make both, please check off both. Um, I won't make you come to both, <laughs> but that will help me decide whether, uh, whether I should offer one or two um, sessions. So this is coming. Will you join me in the responsive call to worship in your bulletin? It comes from Psalm 18. I will read the parts in the Roman type and ask that you read the parts in italics. Would you stand when you have it? The Lord reached down from on high and took hold of me. God drew me out of deep waters. You, O oh Lord, light my lamp. My, my God, God lights up, up my, my darkness. darkness. Therefore, I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will, I will sing, sing praises, praises to your, your name. Um, our opening hymn is As With Gladness. It is printed on the first page of your insert. <laughs>
Church. Uh, the second report is that I spoke with Betty Marsden uh, yesterday. If anyone doesn't know, she uh, took a fall and uh, broke her collarbone. Uh, she said it's a clean break. Uh, she expects we, and it'll take week cover, but it's going to heal, and uh, she's at home, which is really nice uh, that she can re recover there. Uh, in a concern, we're praying for Tanya's husband's father. Uh, Frank. And they, Frank, Frank and Frank, Frank right? Senior. Frank, yep. Frank Senior and Frank Junior. You, maybe you can tell some of that story because that was quite the little miracle in Adam Borough at some point. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, and so those, and then the 
just the joy of a new year, you know, a new opportunity of prayers for a year that uh, it blesses everyone. Anyone else? Yes, Lou. Oh, you have to. If I know where you're going, you go. I'm joyful that uh, when they had the devastating fires in Colorado, that all those people got out. Yes. I was also talking to my uh, my cousin Fernando yesterday afternoon. He called uh, my wife and I. Just wishes a happy new year. I have a cousin, uh, Teresa, who lives in Kentucky, and he had informed me that they had more tornadoes and bad weather yesterday in Kentucky. But she lives in the, uh, the northeast quadrant. And the, uh, the floods and the devastation that took place within the southern part of the state. And I'm just blessed that the people in Colorado survived it and more, you know, more strength for our country. I mean, that people, you know, we believe in something and something will get us through this. Amen. And I apologize for thinking I knew what you would pray for because that's you. Uh, what made me think when I looked at you is that we, uh, we lived up Betty White. Betty's White passing at, at 99 years old. Ah. Um, she is an icon. She is, and I, 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 have, I fell down the TikTok rabbit hole. They've blown up every clip that she's ever done. She was quick. She was witty. She was loving. She loved animals more than she loves people. She said that out loud. Uh, she, uh, let's see, didn't, always had a golden retriever, but in her last years didn't get another one because she did not want to leave the gold, a golden behind with her passing. So, uh, just a Fantastic entertainment. Good morning, good morning. Look at this crowd. Welcome, welcome. Bonjour, bonjour. What's on your heart, my friend? Mm -hmm. There we go. Know, know that Verdell is, uh, as we've been journeying with him, uh, his health issues are, are, are ever present. He doesn't do a uh, very good job about uh, sharing it uh, too often, but that's just how Verdell works. Uh, but what he's actually sharing is the joy of uh, serving on Tuesdays and Thursdays and how that is medicine that you cannot find at a drugstore, that he feels so much better after having served on uh, Tuesday and Thursday. We lift up the joy of all the groups that are going to be serving us this year. And the calendar is filling, um, and so uh, that is an absolute blessing. Uh, I also spoke to Sue Holland, uh, and only God can do this. Don't know what, I, I, when I'm driving, I like to, I think of who I could talk to because I love the hands-free uh, conversation. Uh, and Sue got on my heart. Yeah, it was her birthday. I had no idea. So, uh, great to talk with Sue, lift her up. Uh, she still uh, prays for the day, and we will pray her back to this church just as we did with Ann and Bob. So we want Sue to, uh, to make it back, and, so that, and that's what she wants as well. Yes, Lynn. Pray for families that are going through COVID right now. Amen, amen. Families that are going through COVID. Uh, again, TikTok informs me the ICUs are full. ERs are just waiting rooms you could have really bad things going on with you and there's not a bed, there's no, no room at the end. So, so Frank Sr., Tanya's husband's father, father-in-law, um, uh, went to the ER at Sturdy Memorial in Um Sometime on Wednesday morning, she texted to say, I can't stay in the office, I need to go bring Frank to the hospital. Um, that evening, much, much later, like. 12 or 13 hours later, um, I had had a whole day. I worked in the morning, and my friends come down, and we went for a hike, and we went to La Salette, and we went to lunch, and I don't know. We ended up at Bliss's, which is what you do if you go to La Salette. How many of you have been to La Salette in Attleboro? Yeah, so we went to the light display, and after you go to the light display, you go to Bliss's Dairy for mm -hmm. ice cream, because it's a law. <laughs> um, and I walk into this, um, to Bliss's in Attleboro with my best friend and her son, and who's sitting there but Tanya and Frank at the counter. Uh, so um, uh, they were taking a break from being with her dad. Well, they couldn't be with her dad right. in the hospital. Correct. They, she's not, but um, her dad was still um, in a corridor at mm. Sturdy. Mm. He, 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 13 hours later or something like that, I'm sorry, her, dad, her, her uh, father, father -in -law. Um, was still in a corridor at Sturdy 
hadn't even gotten into any room, an ER room, never mind a room upstairs. I've been in Sturdy a whole bunch of times. This is a good hospital. It's not a fly-by-night operation. They normally don't have people um, lying on cots in corridors. That's not how Sturdy works. Um, and certainly not for 13 hours. So um, we'll, we'll keep Frank in prayer, Frank Senior in prayer, but also we'll just lift up the hospitals, um, maybe. The doctors, the ICU. Um, uh, because um, uh, because, because they just don't have the staff and the capacity and the um, space um, for everyone who's sick. Um, the name that I, I'm, I, I've mentioned before, and I'm just going to keep him on our prayer list, is my friend Barry, who's the one who had COVID for the second time, vaccinated, mm -hmm. had COVID for the second time, recovered from it, from COVID, but he has MS. And, and, and something in his immune system when interacting with COVID, it's kind of like Lyme disease. You can get Lyme, but then after you have Lyme, you have this, your immune system just goes crazy for a long time. My friend Barry's immune system is still, he can barely, I mean, he, he's, he's drinking in shore now, which is better than what he was doing last week, but he can barely eat, he can't breathe, he can't, I mean, just, I mean, this is someone who is younger than me, who, you know, normally I see, you know, walking around and, and talking and enjoying life, and now he's just um, incapacitated and miserable. So um, I'll keep Barry on the list for healing that his immune system will recover. And you know he's just one of, he's, he's a name I'm putting on this um, because, because I know this one person, but you know there are a lot of other people out there. It's not just the COVID, it's what happens after the COVID um, that really we don't know. Amen. Amen. But thank you for sharing that story. I, I, I'm pretty sure you all got it. But the fact that, that Tanya and Jamie ended up in the exact same spot when Tanya was in need, the bulletin got done by Jamie. Thank you very much for taking that off Tanya's plate. That's God. That's all I got to say. Will you pray? Most holy God, we have seen your light shining in this world and we are grateful. On this January morning, we are grateful for all of your good gifts, for the joy of the music, for the fellowship of this community, for the abundant grace that you shower upon us from here into here. Help us to serve you in every aspect of our lives. We are grateful for the good ministries that you give us to do in this church. We are grateful uh, that we got to be a part of your plans and your purposes. Help us to serve this community uh, with love, uh, that they might feel your love and your light shining through us here. Father, you have given us your Son as the light of the world, but we are not always very good at following him. We have been distracted or afraid or angry or greedy. We have not lived as you would have us live. We have not loved as you would have us love. And so we ask that you heal us and restore us, bathe us in the light of your salvation. And when we wander, lead us back to you. Most holy God, we pray for our sisters and brothers in the world, for those who live in plenty and those who live in want. We pray for all of those who live alone and for those who feel alone. We pray that all might find healing and renewal and strength in the sure knowledge and joy of your presence. May all of our leaders strive to serve you and to guide this country in compassion, wisdom, and justice. Help them and help us to value people higher than profit and your kingdom more than earthly power. Father, we pray for those who've, been, who've lost their homes in the wildfires in Colorado, even as we celebrate those who have um, escaped alive. Uh, and we pray for those on the front line, uh, lines, those who have been working to save uh, the population, those who have been working um, to combat the fire. And we pray for those who still uh, suffer in Kentucky um, and uh, for those who are still in the face of storms. Father, we pray for all who face COVID, and we pray for the caretakers, for the hospitals, for the doctors, for the nurses, that they might have the strength and the skill and the courage and the capacity that they need uh, to serve uh, those who are sick. 
And we pray for those who mourn, and particularly we lift up those who mourn Betty White. Um, we lifted up last week those who mourn Desmond Tutu. There are these, uh, these people in the world, whether they're uh, bishops or politicians or entertainers, whose um, light just shines brighter, uh, who, um, whose humor and goodness just shine through even their public persona. Father, we're grateful to see goodness. We're grateful uh, for that humor. We're grateful for that wit. We're grateful for all that is good. Uh, in humanity, and we mourn it when it passes. Father, accept our prayers on behalf of those who've been sick. We pray for a Phil who is recovering from COVID. We pray for a Jane who is recovering uh, well, but still needs um, a, a skill and time and work. Help her to recover quickly and fully and well. We pray for Betty, grateful that she can recover at home, uh, that her bone might heal. Um, perfectly. We pray for Esther, that there might be answers and improvement. We pray for Sue Holland, um, that she might have health. We pray for Leon, for many, many more good days and not very many bad ones. And likewise for Cindy, that she might have many good days and not many bad ones. We pray for Arthur, we pray for Claudette, we pray for Barry, we pray for Frank Sr. And we pray for Fredell, that um, uh, his problems might have answers that are, um, are useful um, and that he might have uh, help so that he can continue to serve you as he does so well uh, for many, many more healthy years. Father, we lift up all of these and we lift up ourselves. We offer ourselves into your care that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. <coughs> And now as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You can tell how I pray that uh, when I pray it privately. Sorry for the slip. <laughs> um, this is why I always look down before the word debts and read rather than just praying or I say the wrong one. Uh, our hymn is I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light on the Inside. Um, Thank you. 
I get some yeses and some no. Some people remember it. <laughs> uh, for those to whom it's new, I hope you enjoy. Um, now is the time when we uh, collect our tithes and our offerings. Um, I'm going to tell you, uh, there were sleeping bags and tents up here. There are still some. But every Sunday you come in, you see fewer. Why do you think that is? I'm giving them away. I'm giving them away. I'm not leaving them under the tree. Uh, every Tuesday or Thursday, I see someone who's newly homeless. homeless uh, and either I come up or I send Jeff up, thank you. Because <laughs> he had nothing else to do on Thursday. Jeff, can you please go up to the sanctuary? <laughs> um, so I appreciate your, uh, your willingness to, uh, to participate as well in this way. Uh, but we come up and we grab our sleeping bags and tents and we've been giving them away. And church, it is not cold yet. Oh. I didn't even wear a winter coat today. Uh, so uh, the need for these things will continue um, throughout the winter. I actually think I have enough sleeping bags and tents. I hate to say that because I'll give them all away on Tuesday and then I'll let you know next week. I think I have enough sleeping bags and tents for the moment. The thing that I need right now is blankets. So uh, if you have, if you see any, you know, blankets that you can pick up for a low price, or if you have some at home that are clean, washed, um, uh, uh, to give away, um, I, I, I open blankets up and I find them covered with, you know, dog hair or like, no, no, clean, please. I know you know that. I shouldn't have to say, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here. Maybe I'm preaching to the television here. I don't know. But we need blankets. We need clean blankets, please. Thank you. Uh, and I can give, uh, because for every sleeping bag and tent I give away, honestly, people also want a blanket usually. It's going to get cold. Uh, and you're going to want that. And some people just need blankets, um, you know, even if they already have, have the sleeping place. So, um, good. Um, so walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a willing sacrifice and offering. Jeff has 
agreed to, agreed to read scripture for us this morning. It comes from Matthew chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was, where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that had been seen as at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. So, We've been following the Christmas story in Luke. Um, the angels coming to Zechariah, the angel coming, Gabriel coming to Mary. Um, Mary's beautiful um, song, um, uh, speaking about how God comes to someone who is seen as lowly and how God uh, fills the hungry with good things and sends the rich empty away. This beautiful song of, um, uh, oh great, I'm thinking in French, that's really helpful in front of, bouleversement is the word in French, uh, turning everything over, uh, uh, topsy-turvy. Um, how God comes into the world, uh, not through traditional hierarchies, uh, but in ways that are disruptive. Um, but now for Epiphany, we switch to the Gospel of Matthew. It's a very different gospel than Luke with very different themes. Luke focuses on, on Jesus is coming for the poor and the needy. Luke focuses on what today we would call social justice. Um, uh, Jesus serving the widow, the foreigner, those who are marginalized um, in some way. <laughs> Matthew focuses on Jesus the Messiah, Jesus, the Christ who is predicted to come for the entire world, not just for the Jewish people, but for the world at large. So our Gospels are different people's witness to what Jesus did on earth, and if you read through them, you find that um, the things that they remember uh, to witness about are the things that are the most important to them. So Luke is the one who tells us about shepherds who are living rough in the field who come to see the baby Jesus. Doesn't tell us anything about 
rich people from the East. It's Matthew uh, who talks about these wealthy magi, these wealthy sages from, I don't know, Persia or Babylon, somewhere to the East. Um, uh, who come to see Jesus. And I think we miss something if we conflate the two Gospels. Do you know the word conflate? If we put one on top of the other um, and, and forget to separate them out. Luke zooms in to look at individuals like Zechariah, Mary, um, and you know Simeon and Anna on the temple steps. Um, Matthew zooms out to ask grand questions about power in the world, to look at the way that Christ, that Jesus the Christ, interacts with structures of power. Um, Carolyn Lewis says, what is the reaction of the powerful when there is a threat to their power? That's the question that Matthew answers. What is the reaction of powerful people when there is a threat to their power? Do they respond with grace and openness and joy? No. Um, right? So in Matthew, we're shifting our focus from watching in wonder, like the shepherds do, like Mary and Luke and Elizabeth do, um, and we're looking um, uh, to, uh, to the fear of those people who are in power. I'm gonna give you just a little bit of a political background. I promise this isn't a whole history lesson. Um, but I don't think we really understand much about the time that Jesus, we talk, we say, oh, this is a time of empire, right? But we don't talk much about it. In the 30s and 40s BC, um, there was a brutal time of civil war in the, Roman, in the Roman Republic, and it was dissolved. It was the Roman Republic. The Roman Republic was dissolved as, and reformed. Julius Caesar is murdered by uh, Brutus and Cassius in 44 BC. They are defeated by Antony and Octavian in 42 BC, just two years later. Um, all of these things are things you probably read uh, the Shakespearean version of in your high school English classes. Yeah. Uh, 39 and 40 BC, the Roman Senate, the Roman Senate elects Herod to be king of Judah. Uh, 31 BC, Octavian defeats Antony in the Battle of Actium, and soon after becomes named. Augustus, the emperor. And this is the background against which Herod is rising as a politician. He is a savvy, brutal politician who operates in this murderous environment of early Roman Empire as it goes from Republic um, uh, into something uh, that is no longer Republic. This brutal man, Herod, exiled his first wife, Doris, in order to marry his second one, Marianne, whom he executed in 29 BC. <laughs> he murdered the entire Sanhedrin when he came to power. The people who were in power in Jerusalem, he just murdered them all. He executed his two sons by Marianne, by his second wife, in 7 BC, so we're right around the time of Jesus' birth. Herod has just killed two of his own children by his second wife who's already been executed by him. And he, he kills his eldest son by Doris in 4 BC. So really around the time of Jesus' birth, Herod has just killed three of his own children after killing his own wife. He was ruthless, ambitious, and effective. He built a lot of uh, port cities and fortresses. He was very good for public works but he was a very bad human being. So these wise men, these magi from the East, they come asking in Jerusalem, looking for someone who's born king of the Jews, and they come to Jerusalem, and they get pointed to Herod, and they go ask Herod, this man that I have just described to you, has murdered everyone in his family because it's possible that they might have, I don't know, vied for some power that he wanted to hold for himself. These wise men from the East go and ask this brutal tyrant who has no compunction about murdering his own family 
There's a little baby who's supposed to be king of Judah. Do you know where he is? <laughs> it's the least wise thing in the entire Bible. It is not a smart thing. Um, to be fair, wise men is an English translation. Uh, it's a translation of a Greek word, mag magus, which just means either a Persian or a Babylonian um, sort of priest scientist. So these were people who uh, practiced horoscopic, horoscope, horoscopic um, uh, astrology. They looked at the stars and they said, that star represents, uh, well, that planet represents Mardu and that planet represents Ishtar. And so if I see Marduk and Ishtar all of a sudden appearing in the constellation of Leo. I'm making this stuff up. I have no idea. But I'm right about the Marduk and the Ishtar. I looked that up. <laughs> um, now I'm making. Um, uh, then, well, the last time, so, so they think they're doing science. Because what they're doing is they're keeping careful historical records of what happens at what time and what the sky looks like. So they say, well, the last time we saw, um, uh, you know, Jupiter and Saturn, the last time we saw Marduk and Ishtar um, in Leo, uh, then the king died, or a baby was born, or something like that. So, so they're doing science, they're keeping records, they are learning people who have spent a lot of time on tablets. Um, we have some of these tablets that have, that have uh, lasted, that tell us, not just about, uh, they would read signs in the stars, and they would read signs in, oh my heavens, they would sacrifice animals and look at the blemishes on their livers, right? I mean, it's the same thing. And we have tablets upon tablets upon tablets that explain if you see a blemish in the liver of a calf in this particular place, it means a child is about to be born. I'm not making this up. There were 32 tablets that were found, 4,000 years, 4, years old tablets that we found uh, that explain some of this stuff. So. So they're not, maybe wise men is not the right word. Scientists, they're just wrong. They're trying to do science. They really are keeping records of observable phenomena and the results, they think, of those observable, as observable phenomena. They're scientists. It's just that there's a correlation. There might have been a correlation in the past between what the stars looked like and whether or not a baby was born, but there's no causation there, right? So they're doing the best they can with the information they have. They're learning people who spend a lot of time with their nose in a book. But they don't have any sense. They're not wise. They come to Herod, this murderous Herod, and they say, um, where's the baby who's supposed to be king of the Jews? <laughs> when Herod is the king of the Jews and, and is willing to murder to make sure that he remains uh, king of Judah. At least they bring the gold uh, that funds the, for the flight into Egypt. Um, but I even want to put an asterisk on that and say the flight into Egypt is required because, because of what they did. So they bring gold uh, that sort of helps make up for some of their mistake. There's a joke uh, that if it had been three wise women instead of three wise men, they would have come and they would have brought uh, casseroles and diapers and offers to babysit, not gold and, and the resin of, of spruce trees or whatever. <laughs> so these learned but unwise men ask openly in Jerusalem looking for the baby and they're given an audience with Herod who plays them like a fiddle. Did you catch that? Go and search diligently for the child, Herod says. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I might also um, uh, go and pay him homage, says Herod. And the wise men believe it. Uh, it requires a dream, a message from God, to tell them to go home by another way. Look, church, the point of the story is not that horoscopic divination works. I'm sorry, if you're a Leo or a Sagittarius or a Libra, you can happily say, my ruling planet is whatever. You can enjoy the, the you know, uh, ruby or the whatever, amethyst stone, um, if you like to wear it in jewelry. But don't um, ascribe.
ascribe any importance to it, right? Um, the point isn't that these were wise people. They were magi, but they were not wise people. Um, remember, we're in Matthew, whose goal is to tell us that the Messiah had come, not for a single people, but for the entire world. We're in Matthew, who, if you look at the trajectory of Matthew, ends with Jesus telling his disciples what? To go and disciple other nations. That's the trajectory of Matthew, that the Messiah has come, and not just for a narrow swath of people, but for everyone. And so it's no accident that in Matthew, it isn't rural peasants from Judah that we see uh, coming to worship the, uh, the Christ child. But it's, it's these people from abroad with these ideas that don't make any sense to us from a completely different place with completely different ways of thinking. Um, uh, we, uh, there's no evidence for it at all, but some people say well, maybe they were Zoroastrians um, uh, because Zoroastrians worship one God. And I think it's more comfortable to us to think uh, that the people who are coming to see Jesus are worshiping one God. But um, these astrologers who were seeing Marduk and Ishtar in the stars don't strike me as Zoroastrians. They strike me as pagans. So these are pagan, pagans who worship multiple gods that they see in the night sky. When I go out to see the night sky, if I see Venus and Saturn sitting near Leo, I say, how incredibly beautiful this is. And I can even see the planet shining what a creation that God has made for us, right? Does that sound about how you interact with the sky? And these are people who look up at the sky and say, oh my heavens, oh no, Marduk and Ishtar are in Leo. That means a disaster is going to happen, right? They think completely differently than you and I do. And yet God uses them. God uses these foreigners who aren't necessarily very wise, but who are doing one very important thing. They're seeking God. They're seeking the Christ child. They're seeking the truth. Even when we don't understand, even when we're starting from the wrong place, even when we're looking in the wrong direction, if we seek God, God will reveal God's self to us and use us to further God's kingdom. And that is good news, church. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going to hand out to you some star words um, that I've written. They're not divination. They're not magic. They're, uh, you know, little, little pieces of wood that I bought from Amazon and wrote words on yesterday, okay? Uh, but they're all good qualities that I've written up. I haven't written anything evil on these stars. Anything you get, no matter which one you get, will be a good quality of something. That would be a terrible thing, can you imagine? <laughs> Hatred, what? <laughs> They all say things like love and joy, not hatred and despair, okay? Um, but perhaps this year, if you're seeking God while you're seeking God, um, if you have this star word um, in front of you, maybe God will use that as a way to help bring you closer uh, to God's kingdom and to God's word. In the same way that God used uh, a, a, the birth of a new star in the sky, um, to bring these people from the East to see. You're already on it, Verdell. You're wonderful. So Verdell's going to pass around. Um, take one. Um, uh, you should, they should be upside down, so take one uh, um, and uh, look at it. Sometimes you'll look at these words and they'll resonate. You're, I don't know, you'll get joy and you'll be like, yes, joy! This is amazing. Uh, sometimes you'll get a word and you'll look at it and you'll think, I, I, don't, I don't know why this has anything to do with my life this year. Again, it's not divination. It's just a word for you to hold. It's my gift to you. It's no accident that I'm putting it in the offertory plate. Mm -hmm. um, it's my gift to you. Um, and may it be God's gift to you, this word, um, so that when you seek God this year, this might be one more way in which God can speak to you and bring you closer to God. Does that make sense? Do the words make sense? Yeah. So those who are wise always seek God's presence, and those who are wise always look for God in the humblest of places. And those who look for God, we open ourselves to God's love and to God's light and to
to God's word uh, to work in and through us. Amen, church? Amen. Our communion hymn is Come Share the Lord. To the love and guidance of God, for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we do solemnly and joyfully make this covenant with one another. We will, by the power of the Holy Spirit, walk together in Christian love, remembering one another in prayer, sharing each other's joys, and sustaining each other in time of difficulty. We will faithfully meet together to promote the spiritual life of our church and ourselves through worship, the privilege of prayer, and the study of the scriptures. We will strive to strengthen the mission of the church by contributing our time, our talents, and our resources. We pledge ourselves to bear witness to the power and love of Jesus Christ in our lives and to aid in proclaiming the gospel here and throughout the world. We will be faithful to educate ourselves and our children in the knowledge and love of God so that the Holy Spirit may be seen in all of our relationships, and so that we may live to the glory of Him who has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. relationship with God in Christ Jesus, you are welcome at this table. Will you pray with me? Radiant God, in the first moment of creation, you spoke and light dispelled the thick darkness of chaos, and the dust of the earth was shaped into your image as you breathed life into us. 
and we could have lived in grace and peace with you for as long as the sun endures, for as long as the moon and the planets and the stars hang in the night sky. But we were tempted to sin, and we were ashamed, and overwhelmed with the desire to hide ourselves. Father, you sent us prophets to tell of your light and your love, but we listened to the world's songs of power and pride. And when we were stumbling in darkness and righteousness did not reach us and justice was far from us, you sent us Jesus, who left the glory of heaven to bear the consequences of our sin so that we could be set free. Our offenses are ever before us and we acknowledge our sins. And so we are grateful that you have redeemed us. And so we do in this place what you did in an upstairs room. Most holy God, send your spirit upon those gathered around this table and on the gifts of the bread and the cup, that they might become for us your body, healing us, filling us, making us whole. And that we might become for you your body, reflections of your light and your love until your kingdom comes. Amen. Amen.
the cup of salvation, drink and never be thirsty.